Hello, everybody. Hello, good morning. Hello. <laughs> so I think we start directly from the scratch, right? So, hello, good morning, Bielefeld. Um, I think our names have been already told, so I will not uh, waste your time with the introduction of uh, all of us. Nevertheless, you see that we are a little bit more of us here on the stage than as it's usual, so there will be a lot of movement um, on the stage and exchanges of uh, topics. But directly to start, Skoda, Skoda. Um, it's, I don't know if it's known for you, it's a, I think you heard already somewhere, uh, 1895, which makes actually, uh, out of Skoda, the third longest automotive company um, acting in this, um, in this industry. Um, and this is bringing quite a lot of, as well, responsibility for us, uh, when we are developing a new brand identity, um, corporate identity, the new designs and so on. Because at the end, even though we are, let's say, trying to be a modern <laughs> company, um, we are a modern company, um, there is a lot of heritage behind everything what we do. And the heritage is visible um, here based on that uh, we started with bicycles um, as well. Maybe a lot of you know that uh, Skoda is still acting, uh, active in cycling activities worldwide. But then we were developing, uh, we were inventing and uh, moving uh, into the automotive industry till today where, yes, electrification, a topic I think I don't even have to speak about, but there is a lot of more behind of Skoda um, on Skoda and that is um, mobility solutions, digital solutions, everything about the mob um, uh, around the mobility. But as you can see as well, not only the brand has developed with uh, the products, but as well the corporate design, the logo has changed um, within the whole development. Um, and every time with a strong partner on our side, um, this time with Strichpunkt for which uh, we are happy on that. So, um, sorry, too fast. Um, what to say more to our brand? Um, what maybe you don't hear standard-wise from, um, uh, from news or from magazines. We feel on our side, and partly it's as well visible um, on the, on the, on the lo logo developments, we feel ourselves as a green-blooded brand. However um, creepy it, hurts, uh, it, it, it sounds, I think you will hear it a few times as well from my colleagues um, uh, on def, uh, defined examples. But as well, we are not only perceived, but we are a simply clever brand, um, which is as well in our genes, because we had to develop every time, we had to invent, um, and therefore in the past we were as well perceiving ourselves as um, um, a clever in uh, inventive company. Numbers. I think for numbers we are not here. Let's say this chart has to be here for a brand introduction, but don't let's waste time about it because um, we have to speak more about um, the inventiveness in design. And that is actually about why. Why we are changing. So a lot of you know our brand more over the, than over the brand, more over the product. Yeah? As said, simply clever brand. So we have defined ourselves every time over our, our product, even though the brand has such a long history. And it's a kind of success as well for the brand, that the products were so well perceived, based as well on those clever solutions um, and, um, and the in, uh, inventiveness in the products. Um, but we want to be at the end as well a love brand. Yeah? For some of our customers, for, for most of our customers, because by the way, Skoda uh, has one of the highest um, 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 customer loyalties, um, we are already a love brand. But nevertheless, we still want to move further um, within this approach and not being really only product related to our um, customers, but being really, let's say, brand related at the end. Yeah? So what we are somehow is functional. We know 
we work, our products work, it's, everything is fine, but uh, it's because of the function why we are often laughed. Yeah? And we want to, let's say, shift to another, in this, m what you see, design, but at the end, into another layer um, on top of this functionality. We want to move to really becoming as well um, somehow emotional, being perceived as emotional, even though we think we are, but what we think within the company doesn't mean that the world outside is thinking. So what can we do that the brand really is moving into this emotional direction? We have defined a new brand role. So our new brand role is your bold companion to explore the world. We will see the broad, uh, brand build up as well on some of the other charts later. But um, this is really something what is important for us. So, sorry. So um, how can we bring ourselves into this exploration together with you as a companion over uh, from the eyes of brand design. And those questions will be now presented by Petra. Thank you very much. Yeah, uh, we are not small company, as Lukash already said. Uh, we are quite a big, big one. We are corporation. And before we are always like doing the deeper dive into the brand design, we have to set, let's say, some goals. Because you know very well, because all of you, you like design, you like art, painting, and all these artistic, uh, let's say, topics. Uh, you know that everyone is judging what you are doing. So we have to set some expectations and we have to set some important questions, which are quite important for such a huge project. Or maybe better word is process. So firstly, we set uh, the questions how we can make the brand design more recognizable and what we should do. The second one is uh, how we can increase, let's say, the brand awareness. Of course, the following one is how we can present our, and prepare ourselves and the brand design to be, let's say, ready for the future, to fulfill the expectations from our customers, fans, importers, sellers, you know. After that, we ask ourselves how we can connect our brand together with the product and with comms, because it's not only about the marketing. You can sell, for example, like you can say fairy tales, but when the product is really bad quality, it will not work. And the last one, but also very important, is how we can use the brand coherently. And that's something what right now I will invite Inken and Strichpunkt team because they are our partners in crime and they help us a lot to build up such a new and future-facing future uh, brand design. Yeah, so let's recharge the Skoda brand. Yeah, so they ask us um, how can we make the brand design more recognizable. And we have one chart here to just remind you um, how it looked before. And to make, to develop this to the future and to make it really more recognizable, it's maybe obvious, but our solution was to make it more distinctive. But so how did we do that? Like, how do you make a brand design more distinctive? So for us, we defined the color as the element that has the most potential to give this di distinctiveness to the brand. And as you may know, color often uh, pushes itself um, to the forefront in terms of, um, of perception, let's say compared to patterns or forms. So we thought this is the perfect asset to achieve it. And Skoda has been green for 30 years now. And it's, they, it's really, so the brand is really connected to this color. And that's really great. Um, and also the people at Skoda, they, they really identify with 
the color green, and as Luca said, they call themselves like the green-blooded brand. And um, I remember once uh, Petra told me that she could never uh, work for a car company with another color because she loves green so much. <laughs> so they really, yeah, they really identify with it, and it's learned, and it's really great. So we didn't want to change that. Um, yeah, but so what did we do? So instead of having this one primary green color, we uh, developed a contrast of a really dark emerald, like grounded and inviting green, together with a um, more future-proof electric green that is much more sophisticated and, and digitally looking. And by having these two primary colors instead of one, um, it's easy to change the perception of a layout. Like you can just play around with the ratios of the color or with the proportions. So it made it r relatively easy to create layouts that are either a little more calm or elegant or really expressive and bold. So cool. Now we had this super nice color contrast, what we think really sticks in people's minds, what open up a lot of possibilities in terms of usage and perception. But, yeah, so we prioritized all of these advantages, but as you might have guessed with this bright color, there were some challenges, challenges that we had to face. For example, with the printing. But we wanted to like we we wanted to prioritize like this advantage for the for the brand awareness and um, for the recognizability. So we willingly put up with these challenges. Yeah. So what did we do? <laughs> we did a lot of uh, proof prints on different materials and with different techniques in order to, on the one hand, find the correct color code for especially for the electric green, and then on the other hand came up with like a guidance um, on how to actually print the colors. And then in the end, we gathered everything together in this brand portal. So we have like this hands-on guidance on how to print the colors. And actually, print techniques are also evolving. And we actually achieved good um, results also not not only with Pantone colors, but also with digital printing, like let's say with the Feven or Saif color printing machine. And during this process, we also developed a little sample box. So now we have this uh, uh, different materials printed with the correct brand colors, and people can beforehand look how it will come out or compare it to their print products. Yeah, but not only in the printing field we had to face some challenges, but also actually in the digital environment. So as you know, I, I think I have to tell you <laughs> that um, just recently, before we started the rebranding, um, Skoda launched its um, digital design system, Skoda Flow. And it's a really, really powerful and comprehensive design system. So the challenge for us was how to infuse this design system with the new branding. And actually, actually, this is a question that we uh, faced with uh, quite often recently, like on how to combine a good brand recognition with um, a great UI design, what's um, most of, or often um, based on learned patterns. And I don't know if any one of you is faced with this challenge also or I'm alone with it, but for us it's uh, yeah, quite often recently. And we don't have a general answer for it. Um, and in an ideal world, I think you would develop both at the same time and then you can react. But um, we all know like the world is never ideal and let's face it, it's uh, most of the times not the case. So what did we do for Skoda? Um, here, the brand infusion of this design system mainly also worked via the new brand colors. So um, it's pretty normal that for UI design, you extend the brand color palette for, let's say, different states, different modes, or just to create barrier-free contrasts. But in our case, we also switched from one primary color 
to two primary colors. So we had to figure out a solution for this and to figure out like what position each of the colors should take over in the existing system. So it was a question of a good brand recognition versus the existing logic in this design system. So in the end, um, the solution for Skoda was that we uh, used different shades of this um, electric green as a call to action color and also as the main uh, brand recognition feature. And the emerald green is used more on a subordinate level for surfaces. And then we have one last challenge that we faced with this color, color contrast that we really wanted to have. That was um, the adaptation for the HMI system in car, what is also a really important touch point for Skoda. So as you can see here, so down here it's a laptop and above it's the HMI system. And I don't know if you can see it on the screen so well, but the HMI system really um, displays the colors much, much brighter. So yeah, we did also quite um, a lot of testing. And in the end, since Skoda has the um, ownership of not only the systems, but also the software, we could, let's say, just calibrate the color and not the screens. So we came up with special color codes just for these HMI systems. Yeah, and then here I have some slides where you can see how the color contrast comes across and you can judge for yourself if it sticks into your mind or not. And now I will hand over to Lukas for the yeah. next question. So how can we increase the brand awareness with, uh, let's say, stay um, uh, loyal to the origins where we are coming from with the heritage, with our brand values, human simplifying, surprising? And that answer? coming right now. Okay, thank you, Luca. Yeah, here we brought to you um, a few, a bit older layouts from Skoda. Um, and as you can see on these layouts that this picture mark is used, but quite flexible actually. And um, you see Skoda written pretty big in different letters. Um, and I th we felt a bit inspired by that. And uh, our answer, so how can we raise brand awareness? We had in mind, well, this picture mark is not so easy to understand, but the name is quite clear. And our answer to that was simplification. So simplification, what does that mean uh, for that? When we look at the, the past logo, you see a classical picture mark and a word mark, and the picture mark takes quite a bit of space. Um, well, we asked around the beginning, what, what does it mean, this picture mark? Um, does anyone know? Arrow. Arrow. Anything else? Chicken. <laughs> a chicken, yeah, that, that's from Skoda. <laughs> That's actually how in the company internally they uh, often call it. But with love. Yeah, you laugh about it. <laughs> so we thought, well, if internally they call it the chicken, how will people externally will call it? So maybe <laughs> <laughs> that's not the real rational, but um, well, there's an unclarity a bit about the picture mark, how to, to name it. And so with Skoda, we, we found like, okay, they have, you have a word mark, the name is quite clear, and you have this really interesting thing. There's this little roof, which you see on the S. It's a Czech-specific thing. It's called Hacek, and this makes it from Skoda to Skoda. So, and we also wanted to work with that. So if you look in the past and the developments of the, the brand, you see that the last two brandings had like picture mark, word mark around, then there's the picture mark, the word mark below, it's, you know, the word mark gets a bit more space. And now we wanted to uh, go into this evolution of saying, hey, we can use them separately. And uh, we use still the picture mark on an app icon, for example, um, but mainly the word mark will be used in communication, so the brand name. Um, certainly we, we cleaned up the picture mark a little bit, 
Uh, flat design, you all know it. It's not because it's trendy, it's because it makes really sense, because once you have a really clean shape, you can adapt it uh, to different production processes. Um, and the constraints were quite strong because there's some legal constraints about it, but I think we did like a good, uh, just a modernized version of that. Coming to the word mark, there were a lot of designs we did and then a lo lot of rounds. And um, I th there's a few, I think they're quite, uh, they're much more. Um, but it, bec it got a momentum when we were thinking about the Hatchek and how if we could maybe integrate it or what could we do with that. And uh, this little fun video shows you how we uh, came from the uh, use the Hatchek and integrated it into the S letter. And here you can see, for example, a lockup version that is only used for uh, some corporate material. So the wordmark itself, you, yeah, uh, it's, uh, it, it doesn't have that much contrast in the strokes anymore. It's quite even. It has a clear contrast between round, soft shapes and very uh, strong uh, angles and it's quite geometric. And that's also came a bit from also from the car design, the car designer saying, hey, we actually want to use this word mark stronger on the cars. And um, so we also worked with them a bit about it. And what's also, um, the UCDO is centered, and the idea is that we can use it now in an animation and expand the letters which really helps if you create digital content, but it also helps on the car. So you see here on the front, in the future, the word mark will be used uh, on the car. And here see, for example, one, one topic that uh, we worked with the car designers, I think one and a half month, this little gap between the hat check and this S letter, uh, there was a lot of talking about, okay, do we have to put like a little bridge metal element so it doesn't fall off and there's no glue existing that is strong enough. And I think after one half month, uh, the project manager from car design, he finally told me, okay, yeah, we fixed it. We, we have just uh, three layers of glue and then that really worked. <laughs> <laughs> so and we were like, Whoo, I'm so glad because with a, with a metal bridge, this would have looked like really strange. Um, so it was like a great teamwork, I find. And um, here you see it, for, for example, on the back. Um, so there you can see it's expanded. So my little clicker needs a little bit of time. OK. Um, so out of the Skoda wordmark, which we, uh, uh, where we draw the letter by ourselves, uh, we then developed a typeface out of it, which we use for um, Ah, yeah, uh, we, we took out this chart. Uh, we, we use these uh, letters only for car names. Uh, so the car models, uh, so uh, when it's like um, you produce these little plates and put it on the car, it's used for that or for some uh, descriptions within the car. Uh, only for that, it's not used in communication. And here we just brought you a few, few pictures which we found in the last one or two months where, where you can see that the Skoda workmark now has much more, you know, space, presence, appearance, and it's uh, legible. And um, we hope uh, this will help the brand then uh, in the future to be more, uh, yeah, to create more awareness for it. Um, and I also think the colors that uh, what Inken introduced uh, have like a strong influence on that. So. As you see, sometimes we get images, hey, we, we designed a car and we're like, whoa, <laughs> okay, cool. Um, so it's quite nice to uh, uh, develop a system and then it's starting, like different departments start to work with it and um, it's fun to see. Okay, which brings us to our next question. That yeah, uh, and I will uh, ask another question because, yes, how we can pre prepare ourselves and our brand design for the future? It's quite easy. You can do it your way. You can prepare the project just from your perspective, but is it enough? No, it's not. 
you have to easily listen what is the feedback coming from your users, your fans, your clients. And that's exactly what we did because we put all the feedbacks, positive ones and negative ones, into one list. We divide it like, into two columns and we easily understood that, fine, we are living in 21st century. No one is willing to print out uh, too many materials. We, would, we need to be, simply said, more customer-centric and we need to prepare something what is, let's say, ready for digital usage, for digital formats. Five, six years ago, this was really nice. This was cool, this was progressive, and I believe that you know very well, because you still, maybe you still see it in, in your channels and in your market. But uh, unfortunately, the only weakness, what we right now, what we see, is that uh, we fixed the position for the, for the logo. It was the arrow flag. And for example, for markets which are used to write from re right side to the left side, this was like a huge, let's say, problem for them because the arrow flag was still on the right side. So quite difficult to set up properly the layout. So we said to Strichpunkt, how you will help us to be ready for the future. Yeah, and our answer is um, that uh, brand design should be much more flexible than it was been in former times, so to be future-proof. So, at Strichpunkt, we, um, we like to call this modular design, so we define these single um, basic design elements and then it's, it works like, like you play with Lego, so you can stick them together and then you have endless possibilities to create grad, great layouts that are always on brand. And these are the eight basic design elements that we defined for uh, the new Skoda brand. And Actually, not all of them are new, so some of them are a heritage of the old brand design. For example, the typography or the icons that are actually derived from the corporate font Skoda Next, we felt that, that they are really fitting to the aimed uh, brand um, um, perception and they are flexible enough and we don't need to change them. But there was especially one thing that we did change and it was the key design element. So we developed the Skoda facets that are now like really flexible and or the, that, that pay off in particular on this topic of flexibility. So actually the Skoda facets are um, evolved out of this, what Petra already introduced, um, error flag that um, has been part of the old brand design or the previous brand design. And by breaking this error flag up into different pieces or different facets, um, we became much more flexible in usage. And because these facets are like adaptive, so they can be uh, variable in size and positioning and in rotation. Um, we can adapt easy, easily on any kind of layout. So that's great, but another great advantage of this new design elements is that they can actually um, support or even upgrade the content. And because we think that not only brand design, but also content is really key for a good brand appearance. That's actually a great advantage. So with these Skoda facets, we can organize the content, we can use them as a background, we can guide the viewer's, the viewer's eye or provide a special focus, or we can even just add a little character to a layout. So on the next slide, you will see an animation that um, shows the expression range that we can achieve with this facet, facet design or this new facet system. So cool, now we developed this further, we evolved it without losing um, the connection to the heritage, but then we thought like, okay, so now we have this really flexible system, but how to maintain a consistent brand appearance with such a free system or like, how to explain the system to others, because, I mean, in a 
globally brand like Skoda, there are so many people working on the brand design and yeah, how, how do you explain this to everyone? And um, actually we came to the point that we had to first bring everyone to the same starting point. So we at first developed this little animation that you will see on the next slide, um, and it explains how effectively a facet layout is set up. So by this, we bring everyone to the same starting point. So it's really easy. You just draw these rectangular shapes, and you pull it into the layout, and then you turn it. But we did a lot of testing with um, colleagues of us and came to the point that if we don't explain this in the first place, people just build up the layout like in different ways. I mean, they are creative people, so they come, come up with creative solutions. And um, then it's really hard to follow our guidance. What is actually, if you know that, like it's built, it's really easy. So we have three rules. There's first rule is use maximum three facets per layout. Second rule is use one of our primary green colors. And the third rule is just because you want to be dynamic, avoid stiff angles. So avoid anything that's close to zero or 45 or then 90 degrees. And as you can see, if you, let's say, start to draw a triangle into a layout, it's really hard to follow this third rule. That's why we bring everyone to the same starting point from the beginning. And now the secret is public. <laughs> <laughs> Actually, I had a little discussion about that, <laughs> if I should tell it or not. <laughs> No. Um, yeah, but then, so we have these rules, and now you're able to do a layout, but like, how can we ensure that these layouts are like great layouts, like dynamic layouts, layouts we want to see? And um, we thought we don't want to give more rules that are based on grids or on numbers, and we just decided to work with, let's say, design principles. So we just give these six principles and we give a little yes and no example with it to make them understandable. And um, we think then people will may have much more fun using it, right? Yeah, and not just following like really close rules. Yeah, and on the next slides, you can just see how these facet designs come to life in digital touch points, dark or, or uh, electric green, even in some print ads. Yeah, and by this, I will hand over, I think, to Lukas again, yeah, who will raise thank you. the next question. Thank you. So now, um, how can we connect brand design and product and communication? Um, because brand design, yes, fine, so the base is done somehow, but at the end there is much more included in advertisement, in the communication uh, we want, where we want to speak about the brand, where we want to bring over our um, uh, stories and, um, uh, and that what we want to say to the customers and to the world. So there is imagery, there is tone of voice, and the car design itself, which is, is as well a very supportive thing for, um, for the communication. Yeah? So next to that one, um, we have to build excitement. Yeah, I think what we, why, why we chose excitement here is, um, so you, know, you can have brand design, that's one thing, but there is also the product, there is the imagery, there is the way you speak, and it all has to come together. If you look really good in the brand design and your product is ugly or not nice or not working, there's like a gap, people feel that. Mm. Or you have a great product and the brand design is not great. And so this kind of feeling of, of hey, this, that's speaking to me, that there's something exciting in it, uh, uh, that, that, that has to kind of appear on all levels. So that's why we, we thought we'd give uh, you also a, a quick introduction of, of what happens next to brand design or how brand design is connected with other uh, parts at Skoda. Um, here you see uh, from last year how the CEO, Klaus Zelma, and the chief designer, Oliver Stefani, introduce the new car design, uh, or the new design language uh, in for the car design, which is called modern solids. So Skoda goes a new direction 
in, in the design. And uh, as you see, it is becoming a bit more clearer in its formal language. So, um, yeah, my beeper has to, okay, here we go. Um, so where branding and the, uh, the car uh, design then really meet is uh, this one typical element on the front. Um, it's called this little nose, maybe you know it at a Skoda, uh, is an element that has been uh, not in the previous brand design, but in the one before it as was actually also part of the brand design. And the car front, this little nose, it's called, I asked uh, Peter and Lukas before, it's called Power Dome. That's how you call it. Um, okay, I'll call it nose, uh, or I was <laughs> probably there are also uh, uh, quite a few names for it. Um, and as you see, for the new um, uh, car, it's inverted. Um, you see also that the, the shapes are a bit clearer uh, on the, so the, the product design itself and how now the logo design and the car design start to have uh, a bit of a clearer formal language. And uh, here you see, for example, the current uh, ENIAC uh, car model. And you see here this green shape uh, is, was introduced a few weeks ago, the kind of the outlook of the car design. And you can already see that a few elements in the design language are uh, kind of make it to the next model, but you see, for example, this clear rounding in the front or these clearer shapes at the sides. And so why do we show you that? Because the brand design becomes a bit more clearer in its formal language, but also the product, so it goes hand in hand. And um, there are a few models coming in the, in the next time or in the next years that will uh, transport this design language. When we at uh, Strichpunkt uh, do brand design, the basic is always brand strategy. For brand strategy on Skoda, we had a partner. It was uh, Michael Rewald from Black 8, and he developed with Skoda together um, the new strategic base. Uh, we were also working with him on it, and what was good about it and great at the outcome that Skoda has now in its brand framework uh, also uh, tonalities. And these tonalities help us to they build a bridge from kind of brand values that start to be a bit abstract or it's, it's really difficult to feel something sometimes. And these tonality values help you to build a bridge to design. And this then also really helps you to uh, create branded content or to brief uh, communication agencies. Um, because they will then kind of bring the brand to life. And um, the, the tonality values of Skoda are joyful. And uh, the next one is clear. And the third value is empowering. And with these three values in mind, um, we thought, OK, um, that's great. How can we now bring them to life? And one thing, what Lucas said in the beginning on this ad, what we have there, imagery. So imagery, images, pictures, is something we really resonate to. So the emotions mostly don't come from a few graphical shapes, but from the images that are kind of like shaped by these shapes. And we had the luck to do a test shooting with you. So um, that means what is a test shooting? You um, define uh, imagery language, kind of an imagery design that you want, and find great people, and then do a shooting and create images so that you can then put it in your brand portal, in your guideline, and have a chapter there which gives like a vision of how the imagery should look like. Because at, at Skoda, we only, or at least me, I understood only after a while that, okay, there is core Skoda, the company in Prague, but then there are also importers in some countries. And for these importers, there are also dealers who work for them. And you want them all to, you know, work coherently with this design. And um, to brief 
like it's it's often a photographer somewhere in a different country does for a communication campaign a, a shooting they need like a reference and kind of that's what we did we we built this core reference and um so here you see our um, uh, images from the shooting, our uh, photographer, Emir, he did a really great job. And um, that was last year in November when we did that. And I feel he had really created a few cool images. Uh, okay. Um, and here you see a few uh, images from the shooting. So. Um, what was uh, interesting here, this, uh, this little truck was for this uh, model which you see there, that's like a concept car, so it's not really driving. Uh, I think it can drive 500 meters. Uh, just a few meters. Yeah, just a few meters. So, um, <laughs> so the transport for that was quite complicated. Um, and um, we created here, you see a few images, so it's much more clarity, approachable, some modernity and coolness in it, uh, some freshness in it, uh, interesting compositions. And uh, out of that, we have an imagery language that um, yeah, has, I hope you like it, we liked it, um, <laughs> is um, yeah, a bit more modern. And uh, we have one Skoda specific element in it. It's, we call it green notion. So there's like, uh, that means every picture has a bit of green in it. Um, so, but in a tasteful way. So that's like really hard to describe. That's why we built like this guideline with like color schemes and, and, and a lot of samples. So an object color could be green, but also through the grading, you could bring in a bit of green. So it's like the wish to design the images a bit into kind of give it a bit of a, a, a Skoda look and feel. So when we look at brand design and say, OK, this is, this is brand design. This is, these are the graphical shapes. And you can say, OK, nice graphics, yeah, yeah, OK. But only when you fill it with the content, when you connect it with the imagery and the, the tone of voice, the messages, the way you speak, it's you get the whole picture. And that makes it then interesting. And here you see a bit like the development, where we come from. So the older imagery in the middle, also the communication agency from Skoda in the last two years did also like some images that went really in a more modern direction and then we, we just went, uh, yeah, a bit of an evolution of that, I would say. Um, speaking about evolution, um, that's how we started. And uh, I remember in the briefing saying, yeah, we've, uh, that we would like to do an evolution. I think what you meant is like uh, being respectful with the brand <laughs> and with the, with the heritage of the brand. I, and I hope we achieved that, but I, I wanted to ask you, do you feel this is like an evolution or a revolution? Maybe you, who thinks it's an evolution? Maybe you, you, you raise your hand. <laughs> so it looks like 10 people. Like yeah. Five and who people? thinks it's a revolution? <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> so we are all on the same side. <laughs> yeah. Because we were speaking yesterday about it, it's like, hey, we started as an evolution, but when we look at it now, it actually feels a bit more like a revolution, yeah. Um, so that brings us to our last uh, question. Mm -hmm. Yeah. How to use the brand coherently? Oh, how to stay in this position? And we are still on a repetitive way saying that the, the current CI, this revolution, is flexible. It's customer-centric and it's digital. So in that way, you cannot just prepare like heavy guidelines and force everyone to learn these, let's say, guidelines and rules and technologies and methods and you know. It's a holistic system, it needs to be clear and it needs to be really like easily understandable. And that's the reason why we again involved Strichpunkt into the game and we said, hmm, how to make it really like easy, fun and enjoy to work with the current system. Yeah, I go, I go one, one, one slide back. Uh, I just, we put that in because that's, we all know these ones. Um, 
little boxes, 5.8333 millimeters, uh, base unit, you know, all, all these words. And then we thought, okay, this makes sense sometimes, but how can we uh, bring people to, to really, yeah, make that understandable and accessibility we feel is a, is a great word for it because you accessibility means you can understand it, it's, you, you're able to access it, but you also want to. Um, so what we did, yeah, we worked through all the content that was there and our core question is, okay, how can we, instead of create more rules, uh, say, how can we inspire in and, and say less rules? So more spirit, less rules. And because we feel if the people as Coda feel motivated to use it when they stand behind it, then they want to work with it and then uh, it's more fun. So it's a really, it's not fun, you know, uh, playing around. It's actually, uh, it, it's actually really important uh, that, that the people at the company want to work with it. And so we used what, what we, what we created here is like often little videos of five to seven, eight, nine seconds that explain specific things in the brand design. So, and we felt with these videos, it saves you a lot of reading and graphics um, and brings it to a point. Uh, so we have also supporting graphics with descriptions and we have a lot of inspirational imagery. So just examples of how it looks like, because we feel when you look at a few good designs, it's more likely that you will create one too, um, instead of reading just the rule book. And maybe I can say that you need to understand that in our, in our company, we do not have in every single project or every single department, like creative agency, like a support. In that way, it will be really easy. But most of our departments are working with this system like on their own, on the standard office computer, right? So therefore, we build it up, the inspirational guide, and they can be inspired. And after that, they can try to work with it. Do you like it? 